Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back for another night in the Passion Pit. This is Jay Michaels. Uh, Susan Merson is a name that uh, has been in the industry for a very long time. She has worked in the theater, in film. She is an educator. She is an author. She is also a spiritualist. She utilizes uh, her gifts of working with Tarot and, and other spiritual means with her actors. Oh, that sounds familiar. Uh, yes, it does. We actually have, have Mary Elizabeth McCary does the exact same thing within her studio. So so we're rather lucky. We have two individuals that utilize the 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 inner works to create a, a much better outer performance. We had an opportunity to speak to Susan and she's going to regale us in her new book, in her teaching methods and so much else. And here's Susan. Hello, hello. Susan Merson, this is Jay Michaels. If I'm on the line, then you're on the air. Oh, my goodness. Hello. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I'm very well, thank you. Very well. It's a little cold. No big, uh, no big deal. Well, it's November. What are you going to do? Um, right. This is a chance for, for me to tell all our listeners uh, about the brilliance that you do. And when I say brilliance, I'm not, I'm not overreaching. Uh, you're, <laughs> one of those, you're one of those artists uh, who, who espouse to the way I think art should be. You do not. Uh, oh. You do not say, "Oh, I'm an actress. Oh, I'm a director. Oh, I'm a producer." You're all of it. You take your art and let it fly in every direction. Uh, and, Thank you. And I, I know of you uh, initially as an actress and a director, an artistic director. But now, I'm hearing you're an author. Uh, that you yes. work spiritually. Uh, that mm -hmm. you deal in the tarot. And obviously, you're an, also an educator in how you deal with your actors. Please tell our listeners a little bit more about yourself. Oh, my goodness. Um, well, I, I've recently come across this uh, phrase called the multi-passioned uh, entrepreneur <laughs> and the multi-passioned art pr uh, entrepreneur. And I guess that's true And because it all comes from the same place, of course, which is trying to find what's really real and truly true. So um, more recently, uh, yes, I, I have years of being an actress and then that moved into being a playwright and then that moved into being a producer because, of course, very difficult to get your work on unless you do it yourself. There you go. And then from being a playwright and producing it myself, I then started running theaters because, of course, I needed to run the theater so that I could get the plays produced, etc. Well and said. And along the, along the road, um, of course, I uh, was lucky enough, very lucky, to uh, be able to start teaching. And when I started teaching at Cal State Fullerton Playwriting, um, I really discovered that um, being an artist is uh, very, very multidimensional. And as my work as an artist grew in all these different areas, it also started growing um, uh, intuitively. And um, I've been in the closet for many years about this, but recently I've decided to sort of come out into the world and um, admit and uh, popularize the idea that um, in my work with people, I love to use the tarot and I love to use intuitive uh, um, tools. When you're struggling with what the next step is in a character and how something emerges or grows, or when you're struggling with the storyline or an arc of a play or of a character, it, sometimes knowing how to access that next step has got to be quiet. It can't be necessarily for everyone, um, just writing and writing and writing to you go out of your mind. So I started uh, throwing cards for my some of my clients, and I found that it really opens up both their own experience as writers and their own experience as creators. Um, it, it leads us uh, back to that intuitive, quiet place where, um, you know, the Buddhists call it nothingness, uh, where everything exists, where, where there is no duality, which is the fifth dimension or however you want to do that. Indeed. That's always really a part of all artistic work, but um, I specifically now am uh, doing a lot more uh, tarot readings and consultations with everybody, but certainly with artists, um, to sort of exp experience and explore this life path. What is Next, what are you? What energy is is in the universe for you, and what are you putting out, and what can you receive, and how can you receive it more? Now you openly. probably have. Uh, we're going to have listeners who are going to go, "Oh, an innovative idea!" But this is this is ancient. This is this is yeah. this is eons old. This notion of, of 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 reaching to another to another reality to find what's in our own. 
Oh, of course, of course. It's the, the ultimate of storytelling. I'm reading a great book, once again, by a guy by the name of um, David Loy, which is called The World is Made of Stories. And, you know, we story ourselves into existence. We create the story of our lives um, as human beings, whether or not we're artists or not, whether or not we do it consciously as writers or artists or actors or painters. Um, we do this in order to create a landscape in which we exist. And so all of the ways in which we make that solid within this realm um, are expressions of our being in this realm. Um, sometimes we get a little bit lost in the material and hard, uh, hard scrapple world, hard, whatever that word is, scrabble world that we live in. And, and it's important, especially as artists, to, to recognize that there's something that's not palpable in terms of touching it in your hand, but is just as palpable in the energetic world. And um, this is, you know, it, 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 it's, it's so true in a lot of the spiritual work that's happening now as we move to this very next, this next uh, ascension, so to speak, to try to um, move past uh, some of the nonsense that we've been caught in and, you know, represented by our government, forgive me, but there we are. That's a four-letter um, word, yes. Yeah, yeah, and the and the chaos that exists, mm -hmm. and so we, if we're artists, we certainly have to be leaders in this. If we're human beings, we have to recognize that it's something verbal and nonverbal. Um, you bring up something so very interesting. You bring up very mm -hmm. interesting when you when you talk about uh, tapping into ourselves. Uh, uh, this this goes back to the to the eon old question: Are we governing our future? Like when 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 uh, when you throw down a card. Am I hoping that card is going to be a certain thing to show me a path to go, or is there some great, uh, is there something ordained? Is there is is the future a math equation where you press equals and there's an answer that's already preordained, or are we guiding your hand when you when you when you well, show us our future? Right, everything's possible, right? Everything's mm -hmm. possible. We live in a possible universe. When you pull a card. You've asked a question, and a card will tell you what the energetic is at this moment, okay? So let's say you pull a card and, um, you know, you're going to talk about going to the gym and will you will you be able to lift a, a 10-pound weight today? And if the card strength comes up, you're going to say, oh, yeah, I guess I'm strong enough to do that. If the card, um, if the nine of the swords comes up with worry, I'm going to say to you, well, gee, maybe not today. Because what you're, what this card is showing me is that there may be some worry or concern about doing that at this point. Do we now, stop you, then? Do we stop then? If I, if you throw down a card and and the answer is don't do it yet, should I not do it or should I say, you know what, I'm still going to try? Well, you can do. You know, you're, everyone has free will, mm -hmm. and and there's there's nothing that's preordained. We create our own stories. We create mm -hmm. our own lives, so that when you do tarot cards, it's not predictive. It's intuitive. So it's not that there's something preordained except for, you know, like the great God above us, you know, maybe has a path for us that we chose when we decided to come into the planet. But um, and, and what our job is, is, you know, the, the meaning of life is to try to find the meaning of life. Um, <laughs> somebody smart said. Um, but 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 cards, you know, people think it's all woo woo and weird. It, it's not. It's simply it's not predictive. It's intuitive. That is, the cards will pick up the energetic that you're creating. Uh -huh. And um, and you can then work with that, you know, and you can ask for a clarifier and you can ask the question a different way. And and so the cards in a very Talmudic way <laughs> sort of sort of create the conversation. You know, they say, oh, well, gee, that's interesting. OK, well, on this hand, I have this information and on this hand, I have this information. And um, I remember uh, going years ago to a, a, a conversation with Joseph Campbell, the great Joseph Campbell and uh, at a bookstore and wow. somebody said to him, do you believe in tarot cards and do you believe in, 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 um, uh, uh, uh horoscopes and, uh, you know, all that stuff and ask, you know, astrological stuff. And he said, well, of course not, but I'll be goddamned if it's not right. <laughs> huh. Okay. <laughs> so, so what he is saying is, you know, scientifically, well, maybe not, but you know, it's just another tool in the arsenal of trying to understand our experience. And um, that's how I like to approach it. And um, I think that 
what the reader does is the reader brings the, the openness of the, the channel, right? The, what a good reader will do is be available to the energetic that's going, you know, that's running through us, just like Reiki energy or something like that. So we sort and of prepare the, ourselves in a way. If, if I was going to a reading, if I'm going, to, if I'm going to, to speak to you and I'm in a terrible mood, I'm walking in with a very particular feeling that, that mm-hmm. you might pick up on. But if I'm confident when I walk in, uh, you're, you're able to see another facet of me because of that. Well, yeah, it depends. But I mean, you know, you, and then you, you put your energies into the cards and we'll see what the cards come up with. Right, right. You know? But, um, and, and you know, I have had readings, uh, God, that go on for fucking up, excuse my language, forever, <laughs> <laughs> forgive me, um, that keep saying, oh, yes, 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 this book will be published. You will get this part. Yes, yes, yes. And then, of course, you don't get the part and you don't, and the book doesn't get published. And you think, well, what's that about? What's that about? And you have to kind of decide what that is about. And and I think it has something to do with the energetic behind the project. The project may have a very strong clarity to it. But the question is, the next question is, will this project exist in a commercial world? Um, will it uh-huh. work in a commercial world? So that's the next part of the question. You know? So when we so when we have a project, we, we just can't say, this is a great work of art. We have to say, this is a great work of art. And... Will the audience like it? Will will there well, be if, an audience? If you want the audience to like it. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know? Oh, that's very I mean, good. If you want the audience to like it. I mean, you know, there are a lot of us who say, you know, um, like I like, sort of gave up on working on television because I just decided, well, you know, I'm not going to spend the last 20 years of my life um, kind of doing, being somebody else's visual cue, you know. So I decided for myself that it wasn't right for me. Um, that doesn't negate the world. It just negates my interest and role in it. You know what I mean? So I yeah. made a decision not to do that. Um, it, it, so we have to give value to what it is we feel is appropriate. And then the cards can help us to figure out ways in which that works or if it's wrong headed or, you know, how does that affect our lives? Um, I found them to be uh, <laughs> remarkably um Accurate and remarkably uh, uh, friendly. <laughs> uh, no re- reader will ever tell you disaster. No right. reader will el- ever tell you you're going to die or you're dead or you're, you know. Only forgive me the gypsies who are you know have the storefronts who are making a living, you know, telling you that you should come back for the special reading and the voodoo chant. Right, Those right, are the right. guys who are trying to make a money, make money on it. That's very different than the you know the the way of of, of just um, doing intuitive tarot readings. So we need to see the world in terms of looking at, at something. We can't just, okay, yes, and you will lose 10 pounds and be tall and blonde. Okay, great, no, well, thank you. Right, exactly, uh, sure. Interesting. <laughs> we're talking yeah, about work. Yeah. We're talking about all these things now. Now, uh, we know about, uh, 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 as, as you've mentioned, you're, you're an actress, a director, and a producer. You are also an author, and that's, that's, that's uh, like, like wildfire right now with you. What's, what's going on with you in terms of that? Well, it's exciting. I've been teaching playwriting for years, and I started, um, and also creative writing. And um, I wrote my first novel, my fiction first novel, in uh, oh gosh, two thousand nine. And um, but most recently, I. Um, How do you feel when we say that? I'm sorry. I remember the '80s. I remember the '70s. So <laughs> when you say, "Oh, way back in 2009," I feel like I'm I'm in a science fiction movie already. Well, way back please, in 2009. Please, please. <laughs> I know we won't even talk about that, but you know. <laughs> Yeah, we live in a different world than when we grew up. It's just, it's happening so quickly. Yep. And, um, you know, um, you know, what, when I wrote that book, I, I went to Breadloaf and they said, oh, it's so wonderful. Breadloaf is a, is a writer's retreat. Mm-hmm. So, so wonderful. But we have a new way of marketing now. And they suggested to me that I create my own press and just put it in the world because it wasn't edgy enough or social media savvy enough to get a, a coming of age novel to work, wow. which I did. I created a press called Block Press. And so the first novel called Dreaming in Daylight came out in 2009. And, um, it's a it's a uh, coming of age story um, about my um, my dad was an entrepreneur. Uh, he was a uh, an impresario during World War II in uh, Italy and uh, produced grand opera during the war. And had a wow! Great, great, yeah, I had a great romance with a woman who turned out to be a spy. This was always the family lore. So I created a novel. Um, that kind of talks about that and about what it was to grow up with those myths. 
and it's called Dreaming in Daylight, and I just recently uh, did it on Audible. So I'm creating, um, I'm bringing my acting uh, chops to bear on my own work, and it's great fun. And then so, I have um, a couple. couple see, that's what I'm projects. talking. That's what I'm talking about. You, 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 yeah. you take your art and you throw it out there, and so, so now we have this. Wow, this, this, this adventure story, which happens to be your dad's <laughs> life. Uh, and, yeah. and now you are performing it. I think that's terrific. What else going on? What what uh, you you well, say? Well, I have a new else? novel that I have a new novel that I'm shopping around, which is called Wabi Sabi, which is um, uh, all about um, a person learning to live in this moment as opposed to the moments before them. And I'm that should come out in the spring. I believe it's going to be called Oh Good Now This, and um, uh, that that should be coming out in the spring. And I'm also writing a book on writing, um, which is called Voicing, which is based on my many years of teaching. Uh, all of that, and along with my um, my textile design stuff that I've been doing for years, which is SAS quilts, where I make um, upcycled um, uh, upcycled uh, coats and jackets and quilts and things. That's <laughs> I it's, saw that know, on Facebook a while ago, and I yes. thought, am I looking at the same person? Wow, yes. is there anything she's not doing? Multi-passioned entrepreneur. That's there the you name go. of the game. There you go. So, um, but mostly right now, I'd love to focus on, on, giving some, um, on, on coming out of the closet as an intuitive and uh, doing more tarot readings for artists and others. And um, folks can um, contact me through my website, SusanMerson.com. I'm, I'm definitely going to tell. I'm, I'm definitely going to put that uh, in in the actual piece, so the audience can can have a link as to where they go. Where do you? Here's an interesting thing, because uh, because half of my life is this also. Where do you advertise yeah. such a thing in terms of being an intuitive? Where? How do you tell people? How do you tell people what you do other than than word of mouth? What do you do? What do you say? Or where? Jay do you Michael. If I call Jay Michael. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I'm just you know I'm just learning that. I think. Um, I think if I think you know there are spiritual communities. I think you know you create an online presence that has this as an aspect. I think you probably get some gigs um, uh, at at um, you know at at festivals or things like that where there's a lot of people that come through um, and give out cards like crazy. And then ultimately, it's got to be word of mouth. Uh, you know, and and there's some possibility. There's a couple sites online that you can do it on, but I I don't know about that myself. Now, now you just um, combined it again. You uh you uh read cards at the play right? Divination, which was at the American I Theater did. of Actors for a couple of weeks. Uh, yes. How did that go? Uh, how was it to, it to was do that? It was great fun. It was great fun. I met two wonderful women who we ended up being friends with, and they came to my tarot workshop up with at Rachel Pollock's up in Rhinebeck the next day. Ah. So that worked out. That worked out pretty well. It was pretty nice. Oh, that's so great. you know, yeah. I mean, I think um, I think that's one of the ways you do it. You put yourself out there, and the trouble is when you, you know, it's hard like anything else if you place yourself in a in a a quote unquote party atmosphere, then people think this is a party trick and, um, mm. and that's okay, but it isn't a party trick. <laughs> it's something yeah, really. more, more important than that. So, um, I'm learning about where I put the word out and I'm uh, talking to as many people as possible. I'm putting it on, I think I'll make a Facebook page and I'll, uh, maybe do a couple of Facebook live, um, readings to see, uh, you know, I've been I've been doing a lot of studying on the internet. Um, there's some wonderful women who have been reading on the political situation in the world from all over the world, and boy, is it interesting um, to uh, work to work off of intuitive hits on people from Australia and uh, you know all over the world. Incredible. We're seeing that uh, we're seeing uh, 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 women take their rightful place lately. It's it's uh, yeah. uh, it's it's a very powerful, very moving moment to see that uh, that people who who've been pushed into the shadows by all the wrong people are finally getting a chance to to be in the spotlight, which is wonderful. Well, there's no other there's no other way. I mean, listen, let's not let's not mince words here. We're in end times. You know, this is you know we're we're looking at. Um, Raking is not going to stop the wildfires, okay, Mr. President? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, I lived in, in California for many years, and, and P.S., it's all federal land that was burning. But, um, you know, our 
willingness to be brave and look at what's really real and truly true is on the line right now because our lives are on the line. That's right. This is not, this is not, you know, uh, an idle uh, activity. When I first started spiritual work about 20, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, you know, they said, oh, well, you know, in 20 years, things are going to really be hot and you, you, know, you have to be prepared and blah, blah, blah. And there was a lot of spiritual work that went on in the last 10, 15 years that prepared a, a group of people, people who were drawn to this work, to clarity, to getting clearer and to getting smarter about being able to see what is really re- real so that we can help and lead during this time. And the question is, how do we lead? You know, I mean, some of us will read cards, some of us will run for office, some of us will, you know, just uh, talk to three people in their living room. But somehow, and I think one of the things that I'm really trying to do with all this work is, okay, I got some information here. I'm, I got some information. I'm a wise woman (laughs) at this (laughs) age. And um, I'm sort of saying to the universe, okay, I'm ready to put this out there. And I have all these wonderful ways in which I've been given these gifts. So, you know, I'm now putting it out there to the universe. So universe, tell me what, you know, tell and me what's, what's going to happen. happen. And what's going to happen. Yeah. There's, there are many like you, I'm happy to say, who, who yeah. are, are growing, who are uh, diversifying their, their talents and bringing them out to the world. Now, you talked about 20 years ago, they said something. What's going to happen 20 years from now? Right. Well, God knows. I, I really yeah. don't know. But I think that I think that we are we are volitional beings. We are in charge of our own fate. And um that's why the the rise of, of the women's of the feminine is very important mm-hmm. because we have got to I mean, we have got to get past this linear idea that money and straight lines are gonna solve our issues. They're not. Right. You know, and, and it's and you know, that's really real. You know what I mean? I mean, the, the burning fire is going to come to you, the Mr. Mr. Banker. Not that it's not important, um, but somehow we have got to understand that it's our actions that create our reality. And it's very tough when you're one person. You think, oh, geez, how do I, you know, what do I do? Well, you start with yourself. You know, that's the clearest. You start with yourself. You be as clear as you can. You put it out there as best you can. And then you hope that the universe will will say yes to you in terms of, okay, that's the thing you should be doing. And if not, you just keep doing it because the next thing will happen and the next thing will happen. Um, That's the search. That's what I'm on, you know, and, and I'm not dead yet. So. That's the idea. <laughs> I think that's wonderful. And, and I, I judge every conversation I make. If I, if I can hang up the phone and say, wow, I just learned something, then, then I know it was successful. And wow, I just learned something. Uh, oh, you're dull. That's great. Thank you so much for this. I will tell our readers about uh, your novels, about, uh, about your website and everything like that. And it is great. an absolute pleasure speaking to you. As always, thank you so much, Jay. My pleasure. Be My well. pleasure. We will okay. talk soon. Ciao. Okay, thanks. So long. Bye. Thank you, Susan Merson, for that enlightening conversation. Uh, speaking of enlightening conversation, uh, I'd like to invite Mary Elizabeth Macari to elaborate on her teaching methods and her work in the spiritual realm. As long as she is here, we'd love to hear from another expert. Well, I'm not in the spiritual realm. I'm actually on the astral, not on the astral plane. I'm on the you know material plane with you. So. Oh well, your work with. Uh, yeah, well, why don't you tell us all about what you do? <laughs> I don't work on the spiritual plane. That's where ghosties are and and enlightened beings no or dead people so no what i've done as a voice teacher and as a spiritual teacher i teach uh different things i teach um uh, tarot i've been teaching tarot for on and off for years i teach uh, other esoteric things like paganism studies and meditation and um some astrology for beginners so those, those things i teach as well as sound healing and reiki so how I do this as a voice teacher, and uh, is, there's a, is it was probably similar to what Susan does. I just, uh, when I have a tea, let's see, we have cats in the studio, by the way. This one's name is Rosencrantz. We have Rosencrantz and Guildenstern in the studio, both from Hamlet, and yes, sto- both still alive. So <laughs> that's, if you hear Rosencrantz crying in the background, it's just because he wants some fancy fees. Anyway, so um, as a voice teacher, I use uh, sometimes Tarot, uh, not necessarily. I use something something called soul cards, 
um, which I also use in tarot, tarot reading. I don't go, I don't say tarot. I say tarot. So we have different ideas of how to say things. Potato, potato. Yeah, tar tarot cards, Americanized. Um, I use, I do read privately for people. Um, I have done that for years and years. I've done that for forty years. Wow. So yeah, I've been reading tarot cards forever. My grandmother actually taught me how to read cards out of uh, uh, the playing cards that she used to throw. I throw I, this throwing of cards makes me upset too. What do you mean throw cards? How do you throw a card? Nobody throws cards. You put them on the table. Well, some people, you know, they do with the wrist. and That's and a bunch of crap. All right. All right. So what my grandmother showed me with playing cards was how to read them um, a bit to do some fortune telling. And from that point on, I began to start to study that. And then I ended up studying tarot cards at about 13 years old. Actually, my mother burnt my first deck of tarot cards in the barbecue. Wow. Because she was super Catholic and was really afraid that I was going to be possessed by the same devil that got into uh, whatever her name was in The Exorcist. Linda Blair! <laughs> Linda Blair. Right. Whatever the character's name is. I forget her name. Anyway, so I went and got another deck of tarot cards and kept them secretly in my mattress so she wouldn't get them and kept working on them. So over all these years, I've been reading cards for myself and for other people. I happen to have found a really interesting, cool tarot teacher. When I was a bartender back in the... Oh, the prehistoric times in the, night, in the late 20th century. Um, I had a woman come in every single day, and she had been a tarot reader for many, many, many years. And she said to me, uh, uh, do you read cards? And I showed her how, and she goes, oh, you're so stiff. It's ridiculous what you're doing. Is you buy the book? So she would come in every day, and we'd just go through cards. And she'd say, what do you see? What do you see? What do you see? Not what is in the card, not what... Uh, what's the symbol? She say, "What do you see?" And she taught me to open up really a psychic connection with those cards. So thank you to her. Her name was Constance, and don't have seen her since. But I, she was a great card teacher. She'd get a a little brandy, and we'd sit and do cards for hours. So, in the in the quiet time in the bar before our dinner. So that's my experience with that kind of teaching. Anyway, how do I use it with with students? I really rarely use tarot cards with students. I feel like that's invasive, so I would wouldn't do that. I do ask my students if they would be willing for me to do their astrological chart, and if they are, that does help me teach because I can see the different ways they might think based on some placements in their charts, specifically with the planet of Mercury um, and their sun sign, and see how exactly also their Mars, where they, how they do stuff, how they get things done and accomplished, and and different parts of the chart tell you different things about people. Um, your sun sign is the least of anything, so. But that's one of the things I do. And I was talking before about soul cards. I use something called soul cards. And you can find those on Amazon. They're beautiful uh, paintings that were done. And I don't have the name in front of me of the person who drew them. And I will look for that. We'll put that in the information on the podcast here so you can find them. And I'll, I'll put a link in there for you to, to look at them because they're quite beautiful. And what those do is you pull a card out, any card, and it, you, you say to yourself, well, what does this mean to me? And I, I use those when a student is very stuck. And you get some very interesting and very uh, cool answers from those cards uh, for people who are stuck artistically, sometimes in a song or if they are blocked up and afraid to perform. What I generally do uh, mostly with my students is stuff like meditation, chanting. Uh, I went and I studied sound healing for a year at the, uh, the uh, Open Center in New York City and with various and wonderful uh, experienced sound healers and teachers from all around the world and I learned a lot of different techniques from meditation to chanting to using tuning forks to using a uh, harmonium which is like a piano and a and an accordion all in one um, to opening chakra centers by using different bead or uh, uh, seed excuse me seed sounds bead sounds in the body and with the voice etc etc and working with uh, chakras and notes and color all of that stuff so those things I do use very often in my teaching with singers with actors, I, I don't generally do any of that stuff. I think actors are already um, working in a spiritual place, trying to inhabit a character, which they seem to be bringing from another plane sometimes. The only thing I like to do with actors as a teacher is sort of clear the channel so that they can uh, have a chance to open up to whatever character, being, thing, energy, whatever force they want to call it. I don't care. So that I do. With, with students. But I, I don't read cards in lessons 
Um, but I will outside of, I do also use sometimes when a person is sick or has some blockages and they want me to only with permission, I can do Reiki. I'm a Reiki master. It's a third degree Reiki master. So I can do Reiki for people in their throats and their lungs or any place else. And sometimes my students will actually forego a lesson and just have a Reiki session if they're working on a project. So when you talk about music, when you talk about bringing in sounds for sound healing, I guess it's almost like when, when we hear a song and we suddenly remember, you know, the first time we heard it, or if it's a, a something romantic to us or something sweet, it's like an emotion wells up in us. So, so, uh, simple notes, simple sounds do the same thing to us. No, yeah? they're a little bit different because if you have a, it depends on the vowel you're using and the sound you're using. Every vowel has a different uh, vibrational frequency. Every frequency does different things within the body and in the mind mm -hmm. as well. So just by changing the shape of a vowel, even on the same note, say we're on middle C, you can sing A ah or E and it will have a different kind of a vibration. And that vibration will change something uh, inside of your body. Remember, we're a very large portion of us. I think it's 85% of us is water. And if you've ever seen online, the lovely things about music and water. There's lots and lots of videos where they play water, uh, the speaker underneath some water and the water actually changes shapes based on the note oh, that they're so playing cool. underneath it, the vibration. Oh. So notes are not something that just is something we it's a vibration every note all music all sound is vibration that's what it is so when you hum a note or sing a note on a vowel you're going to get a certain vibration if you change the the vowel a little bit you're going to change the vibration some so that's wow. what, what that's about and when people chant or do uh, spiritual chanting that's what they're working at they may use the a name of a goddess to say for example in hindu a durga that's a goddess but the ooh ah sound changes the way you're vibrating her and bringing her in and people believe that if you say her name that you're bringing in her very essence wow so words have power it's a matter of fact you know we talk about that hebrew magic or the hebrew alphabet itself is based on numbers and th that is based on vibration and also power and energy in each and every sound so that's how it works you had mentioned something when you when you spoke about uh creating someone's uh star chart mm -hmm. uh and you said about their sun signs the least of things uh, what goes into uh, 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 reading a, a, a star chart like that? Because many of us, we, we, we don't get past the horoscopes in the newspaper. So, right, well, so what's, what goes into uh, looking over such a piece of material? Well, it's first of all, not called a star chart. There's no such thing as a star chart. chart. It's your astrological chart. And what that is, is looking at the, the position of the planets in the sky the moment you took your first breath on this Earth. So what that is is you have a position of the sun right when that's like saying i'm a leo or jay's a sagittarius or whatever somebody's a virgo those that's where the, that's the constellation that was overhead in the sky at the moment you were born also the moon where was the moon what sign was the moon in that day what sign was mars itself in based on where you were on the planet also don't forget that has a lot to do with longitude and latitude of where you were born where you took your first breath um Mars, Venus, uh, Mercury is another one, by the way, is very important for our uh, how we express ourselves, how we think. And each planet has a different meanings. So uh, Mars is how you do things, how things get done. That's a very, 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 very cut down version of what it is. That's just one version of what Mars does. Mm -hmm. But that's an idea of what Mars does. And so you look at a planet in Mars, a sign in Mars, excuse me, Mars is the planet, and you interpret it from there. And then you see what house it is. Um, the astrological uh, sky is divided up into 12 different sections, or what we call houses. And all those houses have different meanings. So it's very complex astrology, which you get in the newspaper. And this is why a lot of people say, I don't believe in astrology. You don't believe in astrology because you don't know anything about it. You don't know anything about it if you're right. reading a newspaper right. and you're saying, "Oh, today Leo will have you know cut it, cut their toenails." You know that has nothing to do, it has nothing to do with anything. It's just one tiny piece of things, and not all Leos are the same, nor will they be born at the same time. And within each sign, by the way, there's three pieces. There's three sections of time within each and every sign. Right, well. right, right. So ridiculous. So no, that's what a quote star chart or chart or astrology chart is. And how I use that when I teach is by looking at a person and saying, okay, where are these planets for you? How can I help you to see or understand what you, what your, uh, by the way, what your blockages are? That's a lot of the times, most of what I do as a voice teacher is say, oh, okay, you can sing, but why can't you sing on stage? 
Well, why are you afraid? Well, why are you afraid to interpret music freely? What is the blockage? Though, so more than more than not, I'm working with fear issues and yeah. blockages, and looking at the astrological chart to see where there's blockages. So that's an answer. That is very intense. <laughs> that is way very intense. Yeah, how many of us are sitting there going, "Wait a minute, uh, I just I looked in the newspaper and said I'm going to make money today." That's not Isn't even to do with you, by the way. It's just a bunch of nonsense. Oh. By the way, before that happened in England, that's where it started. I'm 99% sure having a daily horoscope. But it first started with your with your rising sign, because your rising sign, which is one of the most important parts of your chart. That tells us what was what what sign was rising on the horizon the moment you bought you were born. So in my case, it was Sagittarius, right? So that's what was there. So that is important as a performer because that's how people see you. That's the uh -huh. first thing they experience is your rising sign. That's your personality or your outward. It's like your coat, what you wear outside. So that is how they used to do chart used to do astrology in the very old in the like mid eighteen hundreds in the newspapers in England was by rising sign because it's your your outward personality. What will happen today to your outward outward personality, mm. which in, in the, that might even be more accurate because it's like, what do you? What's going to happen today? Well, how will people see you today? You know, that might be much more fun. Your sun sign you keep only for those most intimate with you. We don't ever really see a sun sign. That's very interesting. Uh, we, we we see so many books where it says that, so we think that's that's the predominant thing. Really interesting. I, I gauge interviews as I mentioned to Susan by. By if I learned something, and I once again, I most certainly did. Well, thank you, Mary. Thank you very much. That was that was really, really enlightening. Uh, uh, I want to thank you all for for joining us today for this special spiritual and astrological episode of Passion Pit, and we will be back with uh, in our next installment with an interview with David Sabella. Thank you all for joining us, and we'll talk to you soon. Have a good day or night. Bye. Thank you.